Hi, I'm Dan Gepford. I'm the pastor of the Sussex United Methodist Church, and this is our time to be together. This is a time that demands courage from all of us. But courage is not always just bravery in the face of physical danger. This week, we will talk about the courage to forgive, the courage to serve others. It is a time for us to worship together, and I'm so happy that you're here with us. Thank you for being here. Let's worship together. Will you pray with me? God, we give you thanks for calling us here. Thanks for giving us this time to worship. Thanks for lifting us up. We give you humble praise in all that we do, for we are your people, and we come together to sing your praise. Amen. I want to note that this week, and we are honoring the life and ministry of Patrick Matsi Kinyiri, a great teacher and translator of African and world music traditions. He was a leader in the World Council of Churches, the United Methodist General Board of Global Ministries, and Africa University. He traveled all over the U.S., often introducing students and congregations to the idea of learning hymns and songs from around the world to broaden our appreciation, not only of other cultures, but of our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world to remind us that this is a worldwide faith and not just a faith in our own communities. He appeared at, uh, at Drew when I was a student and taught us there. He also taught uh, my daughter's Wesleyan group at, uh, at college. It was a really inspiring teacher. Sadly, he died from COVID-19 on January 28th. And so we honor his, uh, his life and work tonight. Uh, we're going to sing, Jesus, We Are Here, Yezu Tawapano, from the faith we sing, number 2273. we are here, Jesus, we are here, Jesus, we are here, we are here for you. Say So thanks so much for singing that with me and remembering Dr. Matsi Kinyiri. Will you join me in prayer? Holy God, we thank you for calling us to be your church, for calling us all around the world to be your people, sharing a message of kindness and love and forgiveness. We know that we fail you many times. We are full of flaws. We are full of failures and we are full of sin. Not because we do nothing good, but because again and again we fail you. We know, though, that you love to forgive us, that you long to forgive us, and that you promise to forgive us whenever we ask. And so we lift up our prayers to you, confident of your grace, as we confess our sins silently. Amen. 
Amen. The proof of God's love is this, that, what, that Christ died for us while we were still sinners, not waiting for us to become worthy of love and forgiveness. God forgives us whenever we ask, and so we can be, for, we can be assured that our sins, yours and mine, are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. This is a time you know we are celebrating not only God's forgiveness and love, but the beginnings of our church congregation. This week marks the 163rd anniversary of the founding of the Sussex United Methodist Church in 1858 on February 3rd. It was a congregation that had grown out of a variety of groups that originally met in houses and in different places around the area. They coalesced around the growing community of Sussex and one of the early members of that group of people joining together to study and pray was a fellow by the name of Increase Stoddard. He donated land to build a church and materials to build it, and they built a church that stands to this day. Tragically, Mr. Stoddard died before the church was put into use, and so the first worship service in the church building was his own funeral. We give thanks not only for Increase Stoddard, but for all the people who have made our church such an important part of this community, all the people who have meant so much from those earliest days to the times of pastors like David LeDuc, Jean McMullen, Jane Forstoop, all those who went before me, the members who went before us as well, people like Mabel Pepper and Irene Van Dunk and Barbara Lewis, and Mary Snook, so many people that we miss and love, so many people we remember and take inspiration from including the people who have been longtime members of our church to this day. There's so many of them. Isabel Rome and Sharon and Fred Hosking and Rosie Little and Neil Faber and Earl Snook and Mary Church. Well, the list goes on. The list goes on and on. Mary Cherkis and Bill and Gloria Akima and Jean Fiore. I can't list everybody, but we can remember all those people. We can remember all those people have meant so much to our lives and have inspired us to do and be more loving, to be caring for others all around us, right up to last week with our newest member, James Griffin. Thank you for being the church. Thank you for being such an inspiration to me. Thank you for being such an important part of a community of love throughout our area and throughout the world. This is a time to celebrate, and so we give thanks to God for our church and pray that it will continue to do its work of love, its work of sharing good news for many, many years to come. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you listen now for a word from God as we read from the Holy Scriptures? We're going to be reading the passage we read last week and add to it as we begin our reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Paul wrote these words. If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend and in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing, Come, Holy Spirit, Come. Come, O Holy Spirit, Come. Another of 
those famous songs we've been introduced to. pretty song. What a way to call ourselves together to worship, to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit in our time. Well, I want to talk to kids for just a few minutes about the start of our church, the beginnings of our church so long ago. One of the things that I think is fascinating is the ways in which our church has changed and the ways in which our church remains the same. There's a picture I found in an old cookbook not long ago. It's a photograph of our church. And it looked like this. If you know the church, you'll be surprised to see this picture as I was. Why? Because there's a great big tree in the front that isn't there anymore. There were trees and shrubs that are gone. There are trees now that weren't there in times gone by. The church looks much the same, though, through much of the 20th century. But when it was first built, it didn't have the big towers on either side. It didn't have stained glass windows. It was just a plain building that looked like a schoolhouse. It didn't have pews. It had chairs. It didn't have a banked sanctuary so that everybody could see. And it certainly didn't have an organ or stained glass windows. All those things came much later. Think how much energy and dedication it took from people who cared about the church and wanted the church to be there to serve the people of our town in the days when it was just getting started. Think how much commitment to God it took to want to have a place for people to be together, to worship God and serve one another, to be able to be there for people who were too poor to find food or too poor to find a place to live to be there to care for people who were suffering and sad, people who were lonesome, people who were just sad and didn't know what to do or where to find friends. Our church has always been there for people, always encouraged people not only to believe in God and pray and sing and worship, but also to care for other people, to care for them, not because that makes God love us more, not because that means God has to let us into heaven because we know God's love, because we know God's forgiveness ourselves. We know God cares about us and loves us, and that makes us excited to share that with other people. It's like a big party, like a big birthday party. You've had birthday parties or been to birthday parties. What do you do at birthday parties? Play games? Have cake and ice cream? Have songs? Maybe have decorations. It's a celebration. It's a time of fun. That's the way church ought to be if we do it right. It ought to be a celebration, just like a birthday party. It ought to be a time when we can have fun together. That's what we celebrate when we remember the start of our church. It's like a birthday, like a birthday for our church. Not the building, but a people. The people that make up all of our church family. Not only here, but everywhere. Thanks so much for being part of our church family. Let's celebrate that together by being nice to everybody this week and kind in every way we can. Let's pray. God, we thank you for calling us to be your church family, for welcoming us as your children and to a celebration of a party that never ends. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've been talking about courage 
these last weeks, and we're, we're continuing that series talking about courage in different ways than we often expect. It's easy enough to think about the courage of soldiers in war, or the courage of police officers in times of danger, when criminals are out to hurt people, or when people are doing bad things to others. But what about different kinds of courage? Last week we talked about the courage to be vulnerable. The courage to be vulnerable. This week I want to talk about the courage to forgive. The courage to forgive. That's an interesting thing. If you look at this passage, it doesn't actually talk directly so much about forgiveness, but Jesus talked about forgiving other people all the time. And I think the way that we can forgive is to remember who we are, to remember to be in the same mind as Jesus Christ, to be thinking the same way and living the same way as Jesus, who didn't think he was there to be served, who didn't think he was there to be praised or lifted up. So Paul encourages all of the church to not think of yourself as very important, not as important as other people even, not think of yourself as better than other people. That's hard. Think of yourself and connection with other people's interests first. How do we think in such selfless ways when it comes to forgiveness? Well, obviously, sometimes it's hard to forgive other people. It's easy enough to forgive minor annoyances or ways in which people are not polite or ways in which people are kind of mean. We can forgive lots of little things. People are not very friendly to us in a restaurant. Or if somebody hurries past us on the road and cuts us off in a way that we have to slow down quickly, or says something mean on a playground, we can forgive those things, even if they bother us a lot at the time. Over time, we realize it's not such a big deal. I suppose we can live through that. But what about forgiving things that are very hurtful, things that seem very unkind or very unjust? They're just wrong. They've behaved so badly. They've hurt our feelings or hurt us physically or hurt us economically by destroying our reputation or making it harder for us to get a job or hold a job. There are all kinds of ways in which people do things that are really unjust, really unfair, and they make us so angry. We know it's hard to forgive those things. Easy to forgive a small slight, hard to forgive a big hurt. It is hard, but does it take courage? In what ways might it take courage to forgive? First way, I think, is we don't want to look like a sucker. We don't want people to think we are foolish or stupid or that we have been fooled by somebody's misbehavior. If we forgive somebody who has done something wrong, people may say that we just didn't understand what happened. We didn't know what was going on. We weren't very smart. Why would we forgive something when we know it to be wrong? It just isn't very smart. We don't want to look stupid, like somebody who is going to fall for the same trick again and again. And that suggests the second way, I suppose, that we might be afraid to forgive. One of the things is that we may be afraid of is that we will be fooled again. Remember the old cartoon on Peanuts where... Well, again and again, the character of Lucy would say, I'll hold the football, Charlie Brown, and you come and kick it. And Charlie Brown would say, okay. And he would go back and he would run and prepare to kick the football. And at the last second, Lucy would lift the football up behind her shoulder and surprise him. And Charlie Brown would miss and fly up in the air and fall down to the ground. And he would go, oh, you fooled me again. But again, after some time had passed, Lucy would say the same thing. Charlie Brown, I'll hold the football, you come and kick it. And he seemed to fall for that idea again and again, thinking maybe this time she won't pull it away at the last minute. We remember that cartoon series so well because we feel like that at times. 
when we are fooled by somebody again and again, we trust people again and again, and each time we find that our trust is misplaced, that they do something that was really wrong, that we could have imagined them doing, we could, have, we could foresee it even, and yet it happened again. And it feels stupid and it hurts to be fooled again. We feel stupid. We feel that we have let ourselves be taken advantage of and that others will think that we were foolish. So between feeling foolish, being thought foolish, and being actually hurt again and again, we're afraid to trust somebody a, a second time or a third time. We're afraid to forgive them. Third thing, I suppose, is that we are sometimes afraid to forgive because we think other people will think that we approve of their bad the bad behavior. We think people will think we are okay with it, think that we don't know the difference between right and wrong ourselves, that we approve this behavior that we really don't approve of. But in fact, those kinds of fears get in the way of being a forgiving and kind person. And it's clear from so many things that Jesus taught us that we are expected to be forgiving. We are expected to develop our ability to forgive by practicing it again and again. When we practice forgiving small things, we are able to forgive bigger things. And because of our ability to forgive, we can make for the things that lead to peace. We can lead on our actions and our forgiveness to reconciliation between people. We can teach people who have been behaving badly that there is another way, that they don't have to just continue to behave badly. We need the courage to forgive even when we're, we think we're going to look foolish. We need the courage to forgive when we think we might be played for a fool again. We need the courage to forgive when we think others might disapprove of our very forgiveness. That other people might think we are weak. That other people might think we don't know the difference. When we have that courage, when we have that courage, Christ has our back. We don't have to feel alone. We don't have to feel like everyone thinks we're fools. We don't have to be worried because the God who loved us first loves us still and smiles whenever we are able to behave like Christ and put others first. Not always easy, definitely not always easy. And sometimes it takes actual, care, actual courage. But when we can act in that courage, we can change the world. We can set an example that may work on people to change their hearts. We can set an example that will inspire others around us to see that as something worth imitating. We can change the world. Let's give that a go. Thanks to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for all your blessings, for bringing us safe to this day, for calling us to be your people, your representatives of kindness and forgiveness and love in the world. And we thank you for helping us day by day to develop the ability to forgive, the courage to forgive others. We thank you for all the joys that we share together. We thank you for the joy we had last week when we welcomed James Griffin into our church family. We give thanks for all the joys of celebrations of birthdays, all the celebrations of people who have been able to get the coronavirus vaccine, for all the ways in which the sun shines on us even after a storm of mammoth proportions dumping inches and inches of snow all around our area, even feet of snow all around our area. Lord, you have been there with us. We pray, Lord, for all those who need you this week, 
all those who are sick and hurting or injured. We pray again for Linda's friend, Yanush, who's been hospitalized with COVID-19, for Linda's cousin, Carmine, who's having heart problems. We pray for Ted, Fred, who is recovering at home after being hospitalized for a fall, who has to go back to the doctor this week. We pray for Alan in rehab after a stroke, and Linda's mother-in-law, Rosemary. We pray for Rich, who has had a bad fall at work and is in Atlanta in rehabilitation after surgery. And pray also for his wife, Debbie, and for the rest of his family. We continue our prayers for Terry and Ted and Karen, and Diane and Donna, and all those dealing with health issues. We pray for Joyce Janiszewski, who is with her daughter, Linda, in hospice care, for Michael dealing with health issues, and for all those, of course, dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. We pray this week for Hannah McHugh, who's recovering, thankfully, from a coronavirus infection, and for our Nanette's cousin, David, for Shirley, that's Russ's sister, and Patrick, and Gigi, and Barbara, and Ed's grandson, Kevin, and for Skip Faber, and for all those others who have been infected and are recovering. Of course, we also continue our prayers for doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals of every type, medical workers, and nursing care providers, and funeral home workers. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We continue to pray for the Faber family after an enormous funeral this week. And we pray for those facing hard times economically, for those who are seeking to deal with economic losses of every kind from the pandemic. We pray for all those who are seeking to provide vaccines to others so that other that people may be safe. We pray for all those who are trying to keep us safe, whether in the military or in the police or in any other capacity, and for our public officials everywhere. Lord, we pray for justice. We pray for kindness. We pray for peace. And we pray with confidence knowing that you are with us always, that you hear our prayers. Even as we pray the words you taught us to say in the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is a time when we get to celebrate communion. We celebrate communion together with confidence because we know that there is an amazing connection, a mystical, cosmic type connection between us and Christ and all of us together as the body of Christ. We are welcome to be part of this, if you wish, or to share in a love feast, or to pray, or just to watch. Whether or not you are a member of this congregation makes no difference. It's not our table, it's God's table. So we'll, wherever two or more are gathered in Christ's name, there is Christ in the midst of us, really present. So we will be the church. We will share that special bond. We will share that communion with our Lord. So the Lord be with you and also with all of you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O Lord our God, creator of the universe, our holy and loving parent, our God, Emmanuel, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we join in their unending hymn as we say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and blessed are you, Lord Jesus Christ, who became flesh and dwelt among us on earth, offering yourself fully for our benefit. 
On the night in which you gave yourself up for us, you took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to your disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, you took and blessed the cup. You gave it to your disciples and said, This is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance and celebration, we now offer ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with your offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. O Holy Spirit, pour out upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. All honor and glory be to you, most holy trinity, now and forever. As we pray together, amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many throughout the world are one body because we share together in the body of Christ broken for us. The cup of blessing that we share is a share in the blood of Christ. Together the body and the blood of Christ, the whole life of Christ, the birth, the growth, the teaching, the work, the healing and kindness, the suffering, the death, the resurrection and the eternity of Christ, all ours to share as we share in the body and blood in this holy mystery. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us share the feast. body of Christ, broken for you and for me. The blood of Christ, given for you and for me. Lord, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go forth in the strength of your spirit to love and serve others now and always, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now it's time for us to be the church. The time for us to be there in our community, wherever we are, whether you're in the Sussex area or someplace else, to be kind to others, to reach out to them, and see how they're doing, to offer a word of hope and a word of joy and an expression of love. It's time for us to be able to care for those who are far away from home. I hope you'll continue to help support our shoebox ministry. Thanks to everybody who has brought in items for our members who are away at college or studying at home during the pandemic from college or away in military service or otherwise away from family and friends. We're also now gathering items for those who are at home, our kids who have been studying remotely and dealing with the difficulties of the pandemic in so many ways. They need reminders too that we care about them, that we haven't forgotten them, that they're still in our prayers, still very much a part of this church family. We want everybody to know that, and I hope you'll continue to bring those items to Fellowship Hall. Or you can support that with your gifts if you identify them, and we will make sure that everyone knows. If you have addresses of people that you like to receive one of these packages, let us know that too, so that we can add that to our list. And thanks for supporting the church in so many ways. Thank you for your monetary gifts. Continue to send them, if you will, to P.O. Box 244, Sussex, New Jersey, 07461. Or go online to www.gnjumc.org slash online giving. Or you can text it. It's much easier. Text it. Text it to 44321 and make your message Sussex UMC. All of these ways are so important because we need your support now. We need to be there for the community around us. We need to be there to help transform the world. We need to be there for people who are struggling without food, without shelter, without hope, without a purpose in their lives. We can do that together only with your help. Not only your help with money, but your help caring for other people around you. Talking to your neighbors and friends, saying a kind word to people when you buy things in stores or in gas stations or anywhere else. Showing a kind word to people who are unkind to you. 
and offering a note of forgiveness. That's what makes the church the church. Being together makes the church the church too. I have to be there for our gatherings on Tuesday evenings, our Zoom meetings on Fridays. Try if you haven't done it before. It's really a lot of fun because we are a family together. And when we act as a family together, it means more. It means something to all those around us. You can see it in the lives of people who have felt themselves changed by the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's no one like Jesus Christ. If you haven't known that before, know it now. If you haven't given your heart to him, do it now. You can be with this church family. You saw that last week. You can be baptized. You can be welcomed into this church. You can be welcomed into any church. You don't have to be here physically to do, to be part of us. You can be this family right now. Give your heart and your life to Jesus Christ. Let him rule you. You will not be sorry. There's no one in this world like Jesus. That's our closing hymn. Hakuna Makaita Sayesu. There's no one in this world like Jesus. <laughs> There's no one in this world like Jesus, there's no one in this world like him. There's no one in this world like Jesus, there's no one, there's no one like him. I'm running, running, searching, searching, turning, turning, searching, searching, I'm searching, searching everywhere. There's no one, there's no one like him. Now in Shona, Hakuna Wakaita Sayezu, Hakuna Wakaita Sayezu, Hakuna Wakaita Sayezu, Haku, Haku China, Damahanya Mahanya Yesa, Hakwaze, Kwaze, Tendra Raze, Nachika. And quaze, quaze, a coo, a coo, china. Well, I stumble over the words sometimes, but the spirit is there. There's no one in this world like Jesus. Thank you for teaching us that. Thank you, Doctor. Bless your life, and may God hold you close. Bless you all for being here and being the church for caring for others, for having the courage to forgive. Now bless you all. Let's go to the world love and serve, to love and serve others without fear because we know that wherever we go and whatever we do and whatever happens to us, the love of God, the parent of us all, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit will go with us and abide with us now and always. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.